Hello guys, welcome to my review channel. Today I'll be unboxing and reviewing this AOC 24G2U slash BK monitor. It's a gaming IPS monitor. And as you can see over here, the price is 29,000 rupees and it's made in China. And you can see the basic dimension as well as the contents of the box. Now I got this monitor for 13,700 from Amazon. Offline cost around 70 to 18,000. So I got it. Great deal. And after research, this monitor actually uses a Panda panel, which is the version one. Uh, and the quality of the Panda panel is actually better than the second generation one. You have the driver CD. No one uses that. Download from the website for latest version. Base stand for the monitor. Top, you have a matte finish plastic and the bottom you have metal. And it has only one thumb screw. For tool-less installation. User manual and guide. They include two cables. One is a HDMI 1.4 cable. And they also provide a display port cable version 1.2. Both the cables are of good quality and around 150 centimeters to 5 feet in length. This is a power cable disappointing because it is a 16 ampere design you need a larger power socket they should have provided a 5 ampere one so you probably have to get a replacement one for this this is a back stand which attaches to the monitor and the base it is also made of good quality plastic and metal i'll show you the different positions and the functionality of this later to attach to the base put in the slot and tighten the screw as simple as that Now let's take out the monitor. The monitor itself is 24 inches, IPS LED panel. And it has got completely matte finish on the front. Now let's take a look at the ports, four downlink ports. Yellow is the charging, one blue uplink port to connect to your desktop, HDMI one and two, display port, VGA port, headphone in, audio pass through, and a AC power. This monitor does not have an external power brick, good thing. And at the back, you can see it has got a Visa mount. Front, you have the power button and the OHD control buttons. And it has got an aesthetic red color strip to give it a gamer look. Now, this monitor also has inbuilt speakers, two into two watt two speakers. Uh, those are located at the top vents out, up there. I'll also give you a sound test of that. Now to plug in the stand, you just have to latch it in place and click. It's, there's no screw or anything needed. Let's take a look at the different motions this monitor has. First we have the swivel. It can swivel left or right up to 30 degrees from the center. Now the motion is actually done at the base of the stand. Now this is the tilt. It can tilt to 23 degrees back and 5 degrees forward. Now next is the height adjustment. Uh, from the lowest position to the highest position, the uh, range of height adjustment is 130 millimeter. Now the next range of motion is the pivot you can only pivot 90 degrees clockwise uh, you cannot uh, pivot it to the other side so if you're a programmer or doing some editing work or those who use it in such a orientation you can do this so you get all the basic as well as the premium a range of motion in this monitor for this price range now the other side you cannot do it now let's take a look at the monitors base or the front 
it comes with a matte finish with the central logo and five buttons on the right hand side and a small LED light. It has got this red accent to it to give it a gamery feel. This is the pivot, uh, pivot joint. Uh, this is the back side of the monitor. These vents are actually for cooling the monitor down as well as provide output for the speaker. Now overall the, the height adjustment function and the stand quality is quite good for this price. Not even uh, higher priced monitors provide this kind of stands. So I, I'm really happy with it. Uh, that AOC has provided for such a budget gaming monitor all these features and functionality Now let's take a look at the USB ports. This USB port is actually all 3.2 gen 1 and You have the 1.4 version HDMI and 1.2 version display port and they also included a VGA port you have the line in and the headphone in. You can see the model. Now this is the AC power. In. At the top of the monitor stand, you can see there's a small space over here. You can pass your mouse cable through it and you can use it as a bungee instead of uh, you know buying a separate one while gaming. So this is a one nifty feature that I found. Uh, coming to the one of the important disappointing things about the monitor is the base. Although it looks good, it takes a lot of space. Now the width of the base is 17 inches and the depth is almost 9 inches. So if you have a small desk like me, uh, it's going to take up a lot of space. If it's a, you, have, you have a bigger desk, it's no issue for you. But just make sure that you have enough space to keep this monitor. Now I'll just compare with my older 22 inch Dell monitor where you can see the length of the base is just 10 inches and the depth is 5 inches. So it takes up almost double the base area. Now I'm going to show you some bright color wallpapers, full HD wallpapers. And you can make out how the color like looks in person. It looks beautiful. Uh, compared to my old IPS panel, which has a color gamut of 92, uh, sorry, 72% NTSC. This one has almost 90 plus. Uh, the viewing angles is good, but for an IPS, you always get a 178 degree viewing angle. But there's no color shift, but there is some sort of uh, brightness shift over there because of the matte uh, finish coating on that monitor. But there's nothing major in it. It's just the color looks brilliant on all angles. Now in the window settings under the display section, I'll show you. It's shown as 8-bit display, RGB mode, standard display range. And these are the different uh, refresh rates supported by the monitor at uh, 1920 by 1080p resolution. So it goes all the way from 50 hertz to 144 hertz and a lot of different frequencies uh, are there. So you can always adjust. Now coming to the resolution that is supported and the different uh, refreshes that are supported via the NVIDIA software. Now this monitor does come with AMD FreeSync Premium version with it, uh, and it also supports NVIDIA G-Sync, but that is only supported when you're using a DisplayPort cable. This 144 hertz uh, refresh rate you can achieve it by both the cables, both using HDMI as well as DisplayPort cable. I'll just show you, like when I've plugged in my HDMI cable, you don't get the G-Sync option. Now I've plugged in the DisplayPort cable provided by the company. Now over here 
in the OSD I'll show you AMD FreeSync Premium is automatically turned on now when you turn on the Nvidia control panel you'll get an option on the control panel called Nvidia G-Sync so although it's not officially mentioned in the specification but both AMD FreeSync as well as Nvidia G-Sync both are supported by this monitor so any issue that you have frame tearing or uh, display breaking while gaming or fast paced shooter games uh, those won't be there when you have this turned on make sure whenever you turn features on like this there will be increased consumption of power from the GPU and it will tend to heat up more now one of the main issues that I have faced with the display port is the lack of support of high resolution audio like the display port actually supports audio pass through when you connect the headphone but it does not play any 24 bit audio now the same issue is not there with the HDMI whenever you plug in the HDMI cable the audio pass through is at 24 bits so high resolution audio is also supported as you can see over here this is a UFO uh, blurt test uh, which is done via the web browser to check the refresh rate as well as the image performance uh, of your monitor now this just gives a comparison between a 144 FPS 72 FPS and 136 FPS it gives you a rough estimate how this display or the image is going to show while you're playing this also shows how a 60 fps and 144 fps looks in a monitor how much jittery the image is on a 60 frames per second versus a 144 which is much smoother now i've slowed down the video from 244 fps to 60 fps and to 30 fps it's one fourth and one eighth of a second so you can see how the 144 hertz image is much crisper and clearer compared to the other image now although you cannot appreciate how clear the image is in person because you are viewing this at 60 frames per second on youtube now there are different overdrives mode in this uh, you have a medium a low medium high and overdrive now this is the medium mode where there is a slight improvement in the refresh rate and the response time of the image so that there is no overshooting issue while gaming and this is the high mode of overdrive now at the last there is a mode called boost mode which decreases the uh, brightness to 50 percent i just turned it on you cannot see the flickering in real person this is only caught by the camera uh, there's some massive improvement in speed and response time by the monitor which you cannot see in real person with your eyes but the camera is catching this kind of a blurry action make sure this is not an issue with the monitor it happens to all over boosted monitors Now this is the OSD menu. The OSD control has five buttons, one power button and four navigation keys. Um, at first it was difficult. I have never used a joystick version of the OSD controller like other gaming monitors have, but you'll get used to it. 
Uh, this is the default one. This is the setting I use. I keep it at standard and the gamma has version 1, 2, 3 and sRGB. The most color accurate one is gamma 3. Uh, with my own experience, I, I put it in that and I'm using it. The sRGB mode tends to make the color a little bit washed out. Now, although this is a 250 nits monitor, but when I use it at 100% brightness, it will literally put a lot of strains on, or strain on your eyes. This is the different modes I'm checking out, reading, games, text, movie. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure in the video you won't be able to appreciate the color shift, but I found out that Gamma 3 looks the most beautiful then you have the DCR dynamic contrast and the HDR you do have HDR support in this you have few modes HDR game movie it basically sharpens the image and increases the contrast and brightness of the picture Now you can change the color temperature, warm, cold or normal or even manually adjust the color RGB individually. I keep it at normal and the DCB mode is uh, basically a demon demonstration mode. It splits the screen into two and shows how the contrast and color is better on this side. Now bright frame I'll show you at a later bit. Now this is the OSD position. You can change where the OSD menu shows up. And this is the game setting. So you do have few preset game modes like FPS, RPG, racing and game 1, 2, 3 custom modes. Uh, according to that, if you're playing FPS, it increases the overdrive to weak uh, and then uh, increase uh, turns on the low input mode. Uh, different different modes are there, which the company actually has preset to it and also increases the contrast, sharpness as well as the brightness of the monitor. So you can see darker areas much clearly. So this is a nifty feature. The company actually calibrated each mode accordingly now you can also adjust the depth of the HDR in each setting clicking on the right navigation key turns on the in display uh, crosshair it has got one default color and one setting if you press the left key it turns on the different game modes so you can on the fly turn on any game mode you want without turning on or turning on or popping up the OSD menu the first button turns on the different modes or the input setting now this is the i menu which was included in the CD, but I downloaded the latest version. It looks, uh, doesn't look that great app, but it has got all the functionalities in a very simple layout manner. And the app exactly isn't uh, responsive. You have to click it multiple times to actually take the, turn on the effects properly. Now they could have made better quality software for this, but it's better than clicking the button many times to change settings.
Now there's an alternate app. It's called Click Monitor DDC. It's an after uh, aftermarket software. It's, it's available for free. Just Google it. Uh, it gives you a basic control of brightness, contrast, input, and sound, and also the temperature color also. So I find this app to be much better than the company's original iMenu OSD control app. Works with all sorts of monitor. Now you can try this out. Now I showed you this picture boost. Now this basically turns on a particular area on your monitor at a certain brightness or contrast. Say you're playing a dark RPG game and the area, the part of the game is very dark. You cannot see. So you can adjust a part of the screen or the game to be very bright. Or you're playing a FPS game, you can adjust the center part of the screen to be brighter than the other part. So you can see much clearly and play the game nicely. So this gives an advantage to certain type of gamers out there. So who, whoever needs this feature, they have added it. It's all right. Now you can adjust the brightness, contrast, the size, the direction, and the location of the picture boost area. Now I'm going to test the sound and speaker. Now this is a size comparison between a 24 inch and a 21.5 inch IPS monitor. You can see how it looks and how the size difference is. Hope you like my video. Thank you guys.